<laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, and I think this one, Sean, you probably want to go get a snack for, but uh, oh, Andor. God. Should be fair. I'm with brilliant, Sean on this. Brilliant ding uh, chime there at that moment. I'm with Sean <laughs> yeah, on this one. I am, I am bored of it. It's just... Oh. What I got me was like this it. episode. What got me was this episode was set in like green mountainous hills, and so they decided to copy like Lord of the Rings and the House of Dragon, which I'm both bored stupid of. And now this one set on another planet, which is just all green and walking and talking and just oh god. You know what? You got to give Cameron credit. Unlike Star Wars, he at least had a planet that looked different. All these yeah. Star Wars shows, it's either the desert. Or it looks like you know New Zealand or whatever. Uh, who you know? Can't they think up something original, man? You know? No, they can't. But I will admit, I I was pretty tough on this show the first three episodes because I felt like there was not a good, not good motivations so of the characters were explained. I'm warming up to it in episode four because they've kind of like they finished that part. Now they're getting into the actual story and there's some intrigue there like star wars has got to change or do something different it cannot keep playing around with the the same stuff that's been doing forever if it wants to succeed and this seems to be trying that it's it's um it's got a lot of intrigue it's a much more subtle show there's a moment in it that i don't know it just kind of hit me weird but there's an Imperial officer that is trying to get some information from another Imperial officer and he won't give it to her. So they both go in, they talk to their superior who has clearly been around since the old Republic. And he kind of goes through all the banal paperwork, you know, process nonsense of all this stuff and the way they're talking about it. And it's something that's like, the empire. This person was around for the Republic. He remembered when it was a free society, and now they're just talking very banally about doing these things that are really going to hurt people and and are taking away people's freedoms and everything. And I'm kind of thinking, like, it's amazing how they just just kind of go with it. Like, how many people are just fine with authoritarians just taking over? And that kind of hit me with, like, yeah, and I see that now, where people are just perfectly happy with. People just taking yeah. away people's rights and that, stuff. That makes and me... I like I like that. I think it's a thing that should be explored. And that's Take... one thing that it was kind of taken I, from it. I think it was in The Simpsons that they had um, uh, or is somewhere and it, they were talking about how George Lucas really knows how to write for people. And like in The Phantom Menace, it's kind of and now the Judicial Committee will call <laughs> kind of... a roll call and so forth. And it's like, yeah, this is what kids love. You yeah, know? I, lo I love uh, the, the walker, the robot walker, putting on some reading glasses. Like, okay, is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, it's uh, a friend of mine, I spoke to him about it, and he said he's not even watched it. And he said, because it doesn't seem to be any Force users in there. And I kind of agree with that, that it's kind of like, not that Star Wars has to be about the Force and lightsabers, but if you, you, you've got some Jedi kicking ass and stuff on the screen, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Most of the time, apart from the I, last three. I, I understand where you're from. Yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. where you're coming from on that, George. But I would say that when they've everything they've done that is tied into the greater saga has just fallen on yeah. its face. <clears throat> uh, Mandalorian barely tied into it, if at all. But then you had Boba you had Fett, that. you had Obi Wan, yeah. and they, they've just sucked. Yeah, uh, I, I, I get it. I know where you're, I, I. I totally understand where you're coming from. You have a certain idea of the way Star Wars should be, and this isn't it. This is very different. But I'm kind of like going, okay, if I can let go of all that, I think there's something here, and I'm I'm intrigued enough to see it going through. And I was talking about these two talking to you about this. There was another scene where I, Mon Mothma is talking to her. I think it's her husband. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's her husband. And and yeah. he's he set up all this stuff on her calendar for a big – um, dinner that's going to invite other senators and stuff in and they're going to, and he's like you know, you used to be fun and, and he, she's like, you're bringing in people who are going to starve millions of people and you know, because of what they're voting for in the Senate, so their support of the Empire <laughs> and he's like, look can't we just have a dinner, you know and just not worry about this kind of stuff and that 
it kind of hit me, you know, it's like, yeah, it's people are too worried about their fun stuff than, than what these elites are actually doing and what they're mm. affecting in oh, the real a, world. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Is so this what, I, is this I, what you want in I your like Star Wars? Is this what you want in your Star Wars escape? Well, I didn't know I did. Let's put it that way, but apparently I do. This sounds like <laughs> this, this sounds like more I was more rap. intrigued I was more intrigued about what they were gonna have for dinner. Uh, <laughs> we'll find that out in episode <laughs> five. Yeah. Well Stark said it's a Star Wars for grown ups. I, I blue said milk last or week, no blue milk. I liked it. I liked a, the first three, and I like this one. I think it's, it's this a, one's got real it potential. Sound, it's definitely it, going somewhere. It sounds to me like it's a Star Wars for that very specific type of Star Wars that is a fucking super nerd, which is all three of you perfectly. I so. actually, I, I'm, I'm not into it. it. I'm not into I, it. I, oh, okay. Yeah, I would say it's actually for the people who are just burned out on all the regular Star Wars stuff at this sure, point. Sure, sure. It's like it's like Star Wars. With a touch of Blade Runner in it. Oh well, yeah, okay, I could, yeah. It's Maybe. not laser swords, and you know, it's it's quite, it's it's a very it's, slow burn, and it's got a lot of intrigue and espionage and that kind of stuff going yeah. on in it. And it's talking, it's, 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 it's a lot of talking. There's a lot of talking. But like Stellan Skarsgård, he he plays this contact with the rebels. He's very competent, and he he. He can fight. He can do all this stuff. And then he gets back to Coruscant and he puts on a wig and he apparently owns an antique shop. And he's putting on this very foppish persona <laughs> to, to sell stuff. But it's all a cover, mm. you mm. know, to help Mon Mothma, you know, I guess Mon Mothma's rich, so she's supplying You're losing money. Me. You're losing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You got it. You're, you're, you're either better, into that better. kind of thing or you're not. You, you better move. Fast I like I like a slow me. burn if it's done right. Look, to your point, the first three episodes were not structured as well as they should have been, and I didn't understand some of these motivations that they put there, and so the slow burn really hurt it. Now they've kind of like okay, now phase two that that they that was all just to put Andor in place for this next part, so, and this is starting to get interesting. So the ultimately though, and spoilers, I guess this fucking dude dies in one of those movies. Like you already know Rick how he, yeah. yeah. So yeah, what, yeah, yeah. how do you get that invested? I guess the other characters, right? Because you you know this dude. Oh, gonna they're die. all gonna die. They're all gonna die. I, uh, I was you know, sure. I was very Mark critical is. when they said oh. no. I was very critical because it was a prequel to a prequel. We know the bloke's going to end up dead. But like having watched it, I enjoyed the first three. I know a lot of people didn't. I enjoyed the first three, and I've enjoyed this one. And I am kind of invested in seeing where it takes us because it is an element of Star Wars that we haven't seen. Mm. And it's they are building yeah, the, the boring side. To fight back. So, yeah, that's you just you, that <laughs> laser sword boy. Do you guys ever feel like you're going to get too much Star Wars, though? I yeah. feel like we're already there in a lot of ways. Already there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not a criticism. I just, but they are, I just listen, wonder they're if trying it, something different, which is what we wanted. You know, I, yeah, yeah. I just wonder if, like, win. I just wonder if, like, it loses if it's losing some of its mystery appeal to you guys as all. Well. I think well, that's why they on this approach with Andor because it is completely different. And mm. the way you discuss it, Phil, you say, you know, we know what's going to happen to Andor. I think the way they've solved that is like. Andor is a player in a much larger bit of intrigue yeah. that he, he may be the focus focal point, but he's Ooh, not the him. focus of the story. Oh, oh, wait, hang on, hang on. My headphones have gone. <laughs> just a, <laughs> quick, just, quick slag him off. Just to charge the batteries. <laughs> just a nick of time. I, I'm just saying that it's he, he is a player in a, a much larger set of intrigue and they're concentrating on other characters. It does have a little bit of that Game of Thrones thing going on where it's a lot more dense and there's it feels yeah. a little bit more mature than your standard, hey, let's swing laser swords and jump around and do 8 million flips and explode, you know. Um, now, yeah, I love all that. but I'd watch that movie. Just laser swords swinging around. You did, we, we've seen that movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 8 million how times it, we've how, seen that movie, Sean. Thank you for watching this excerpt from Outpost Frequencies. Tune in live every Sunday at noon central time or six o'clock UK time. And also remember to come to lastmovieoutpost.com for all your latest in movie news, streaming news, and everything cool about Phil. We are the cool news now. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next stream.